All right, I am aware that it's been like a month since last time I uploaded a YouTube video to the channel. Believe me, guys, I'm not abandoning you. I'm not selling my collection and quitting. We've just been getting some new siding put on the house. So for the past like three weeks, it's been nonstop banging during any hours where I can reasonably make a video. So that explains the inactivity as of late. But today I decided that since they're finally gone, it's time to make another video. And I figured what better video to make than to do a little manga reading log to showcase some of the best manga I've been reading this summer. So hopefully you enjoy this video. If you do, make sure to go down, leave a like and subscribe for more manga videos just like this and leave a comment down below telling me what is the best manga that you yourself have been reading this summer. But enough of the chit chat, let's get right down to business talking about the first manga series I started reading this summer. That is going to be The Fable. I believe this is from Kodansha, um, this new release in omnibus form. So glad they're publishing this in English because I have absolutely been loving this recently. This manga is basically about this master hitman who is the absolute best at his work. He can kill anybody in a couple seconds and he does a job and his boss tells him, you know what, you gotta go lay low for a bit, live a normal life to take the heat off you. And this first omnibus here basically follows our hitman main character as he tries to get more accustomed to normal people life, you know, civilian life, but he still has a couple run-ins with thugs and you no know, dangerous people that he has to resolve in either a creative pacifist kind of way or in a very kick-ass assassin type of way. With that being said, I've only read this first omnibus here. I think the second one is out. Um, I heard that Profitaku actually did not enjoy this first omnibus, so I am here to say do not listen to that man, listen to me like you always do. You know I've never steered you wrong with my manga opinion, so trust me, if this sounds like something interesting to you, I highly recommend picking up and getting into The Fable. Alright, so now let's talk about a manga series that I have literally just started and read one chapter of. That is going to be the beginning of Dementia 21. First off, I just gotta say, look at this absolutely beautiful release this thing is oversized and it is insane looking now we can't say with certainty what this entire series is going to be about but the first story that i read is about like this nursing home worker who's really good she's like employee of the month her employees hate her so they set her up with like some haunted old lady she has to go take care of who's like an evil spirit something like that it is absolutely insane and yeah if you couldn't tell by the cover of this it's kind of like a weird psychedelic just overall bizarre series from what I can tell so far and that kind of thing is right up my alley so again only read the first chapter of this but I've heard some great things so I'm looking forward into reading the rest of this first volume. Now speaking of series that are just outright bizarre we have another first volume that I just finished reading not too long ago that is The Girl from the Other Side volume one. Now I have not only heard a lot of good things about this series but people say you know you gotta pick up the beautiful leather bound deluxe edition. You know, I've seen them on the shelves at the Barnes & Noble and just think, you know, these are just so goddamn beautiful. But I think I will be going the singles route for this series because they fit perfectly in your hand. High quality paper, just the perfect size for me. I love these singles and how they look. But besides how these volumes look, I was really impressed with this first volume. Kind of like in this post-apocalyptic, I want to say, kind of fantasy world where the humans and these kind of monsters live on separate ends. And this one monster slash beast kind of guy takes care of this human little girl and tells her, you know, never interact with others, other humans or things of that nature, tries to keep her safe. And there are just so many twists and bizarre things happening in this first volume that it's really just piqued my curiosity. I'm finally seeing why so many people have hyped this up for years. And I can't say too much else about this because I've only read the first volume, but I'm super interested to see, you know, what's the cause of this curse that turns people into these outsiders, these seemingly like monster creatures. Super interesting, awesome art, not a whole lot I didn't love about this first volume, really got to pick up more. Now shifting gears from a potential modern classic to an older classic manga series that's had quite a bit of influence on the medium, we have 1 through 7 of The Skull Man, a series that I read and finished actually a couple days ago, and this is a super interesting one. I'll go ahead and show off the covers because there are some really cool ones in here, and you'll actually see, if you're familiar with Kamen Rider, that uh, this Skull Man character is actually the basis for Kamen Rider, inspired him, I believe, 
by Shitaru Ishinomori is one who made Kamen Rider, um, who worked on this manga. And basically what this manga is, is this guy who has escaped death a couple times, says he's like been brought back from hell to get revenge on the people who killed his parents, I believe. And he has like this anti-hero persona, the Skull Man, who has like insane mental, I don't even know what to call it, like psychic powers, just absolutely broken. And all the while he's trying to get revenge on his parents' killers, he's fighting against like this weird underground syndicate of human animal hybrids that he has to like fight against. It's a weird one. I'm not even totally sure. I completely wrap my head around this story, but it's definitely an interesting experience. I will give it that. One thing I really like about this series is just how visually unique it is. I mean, I tried to find a good example on the fly, but like there's some really interesting paneling. I'll find some more examples of it, but just from like an art style, the paneling kind of reminds me of some classic stuff like Tezuka. It's very dynamic and just visually appealing. Now, while we're on the topic of some older classic manga, now's a good time to mention that I've been reading uh, Blackjack by Osamu Tezuka, one of his most legendary series. If you guys have been following the videos recently, you'll recall I've started a brand new video series called Project Blackjack, where I try to collect all of this holy grail manga for under $800, only using the profit I get from flipping manga. So far, it's been a very fun challenge, but the best part, the payoff of this challenge is getting to read such a kick-ass manga. For those who don't know, Blackjack is basically a short story kind of collection about this unlicensed doctor named Blackjack who takes on the craziest cases, uses some unconventional method, runs into some uh, unconventional patients. And most of you guys will know that Osama Tezuka is just my favorite manga of all time. I love his storytelling, his artwork, you know, his paneling that I kind of talked about earlier. Every aspect that goes into the way he makes manga is just special. That's why he's my favorite. And this is looking to be one of my favorites from him so far far and given his extensive catalog of amazing manga that is quite the compliment all right so now i'm gonna bring you back to modern day manga leaving the old classics behind and talking about actually kind of a controversial new manga that is the first volume of the hunter's guild red hood now i found this at my local store about a month ago i'd say and it's been sitting on the shelf until yesterday, I finally read this. For those of you who are not familiar, who've never heard of the Hunter's Guild Red Hood, I wouldn't blame you. This was one that actually had quite a bit of hype and people were saying it had a lot of potential, but it got axed and only had three volumes put out in English before it was canceled. So this manga is basically a spin or a twist, I guess, on the uh, grim fairy tales. You have obviously Red Hood, Little Red Riding Hood, and they're out killing werewolves in this first volume. Now, I don't think the main character here is all that compelling. We didn't really get to see enough of Red Hood in this first volume for me to really be pulled in by her character. But I mean, some of the action in the artwork is really cool. I believe this is made by the assistant or one of the assistants who helped with My Hero Academia. I can definitely see some similarities between this series and that one. But I did go on my anime list, I saw this had some very mixed and negative reviews and that it doesn't really get any better and in fact actually gets worse and that's why it was cancelled. But some people say, you know, they wish this never got cancelled because it's a hidden gem, one they really enjoyed. So I plan on reading the rest of this digitally, obviously not going to pick up the other two volumes if it's never going to continue. But I will say this first volume has me intrigued enough to want to keep giving it a chance. And I made a point to try some newer manga series this year um, as I kind of branch out into different stuff. So I think that this will be a good one to dip my toes in, try and just see for myself if it actually was deserving of all the hype it got when it was ongoing or if it was deservingly axed and it met the appropriate fate. All right, so now we're down to the final manga that I've been reading this summer, and I might be saying this a little prematurely, but I think I've saved the best for last. This past week, I started reading Shinichi Sakamoto's Innocent, which is a manga that, if you've been around the manga community for a while, you know, before this was published, this is one that people were dying to have a publisher pick up, and now that's finally here, I'm not seeing a lot about it. Maybe that's just because it's not necessarily a new manga, rather just one that's newly in English physical print. But boy oh boy, so far I'm two volumes into this three volume omnibus, which by the way, Dark Horse did a stupendous job. This is what every manga omnibus should strive to be. It's heavy, good paper quality, white pages, just a great design. I mean, this is the gold standard 
I don't know what went wrong with Gantz because Dark Horse killed this one. Basically, this is a historical manga about the son of uh, France's big executioner, head honcho guy. They basically have their whole lineage is destined to be executioners. I apologize for butchering that already very shoddy French history lesson, but it follows this, I believe, 14-year-old boy named Charles who is next in line to be the big executioner in France. And by the looks of him, you would think, you know, he'd fit right in being an executioner, definitely a kind of ghastly, creepy guy, but he wants nothing to do with killing people. He's a kind of soft, tender, kind-hearted boy who wants no part of the family business. But basically he gets his feet put to the flame and forced to be an executioner and just seeing all of the inner turmoil and external, you know, turmoil that surrounds him and his family is, it's super intense. And the artwork of this manga perfectly matches the grisly time period, you know, when people were being executed, they were being put on wheels and beaten and, you know, torn apart in public showings. I mean, just a terrible period of time and the artwork is super dark and detailed and does it so much justice. But if you're looking for a historical manga that's not only extremely highly acclaimed, has some of the most beautiful artwork you will ever see, but also has a lot of interesting themes and things to say, man, I know I'm early on in this one, I just started reading it a couple days ago, but Innocence has my highest recommendation. I could see this definitely ending up on my top five manga I've read for 2024, and uh, it might be pretty high up on the list. Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for this summer 2024 manga reading log. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. I know it's been quite a bit since I uploaded a manga reading log like this, but I know a lot of you guys have been wanting these kinds of videos back, so of course, I'm here to deliver, but hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more manga videos just like this. So yeah, this has been the Prom G. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. And as always, hope to catch you in the next one.